So uh, I never know if people are going to be excited about that or not. It sort of depends on what mood you're in. But um, so uh, the first couple of poses we're going to do um, at the wall, if you can. Um, if you can't, I think everybody's comfortable with their spot at the wall. Hi, Tony. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Um, so uh, we'll do a couple standing poses at the wall and then you'll need the usual stuff, um, chair, blankets, blocks. So have all that ready. And I think actually what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start standing because we're going to be doing a lot of um, seated and uh, other poses on the ground. So we'll just go ahead and get start, started standing. And so have your, your blocks if you need them for standing poses um, and uh, back to the wall, if you can maneuver that. Um, if, you, if you can't, if you don't have a setup where you can have your back to the wall, just use some extra support for these um, first couple of standing poses. So maybe you have a heel at the wall if that's comfortable to stabilize you or um, just a little more height in your um, props for standing poses. Like if you don't normally use a block for standing poses, go ahead and grab a block or even a chair. Um, so give yourself a little extra support for these first couple of poses. And we'll start in Tadasana with the back to the wall. So you can stand with your feet hip distance apart or slightly apart and the heels are at the wall, the buttocks are at the wall, the outer shoulders are at the wall and if you're not at the wall just imagine that there's a wall behind you so you can sort of orient yourself the back of the head is on the wall. Again, if you're at the wall and it often feels like you're taking your head way back when you do that, but that's having your head in line with your shoulders. And so most of the time, most of us spend um, our lives rolling forward with our, especially with our upper back. So when we take our shoulders back and take our head back, we learn just, just what it is to be upright. But focus more on getting the support of the wall in this pose. So feel supported by the buttocks at the wall, the shoulder blades, the outer shoulders, the back of the head at the wall, feeling supported. And you can even close your eyes for just a moment. Stretch your toes forward. Make sure you've got a stable, steady base in your feet. And the weight's even on your feet, the inner and outer edges of the feet. Feel that the, the kneecaps are lifted. The tops of the thighs are moving backward. There's length in your low back. So the tops of the buttocks move down towards the floor. You can even move the flesh of your buttocks down towards the floor. With that length in the lower back, feel the abdomen lifting up. So don't let the abdomen hang, but consciously tone your abdomen, especially the lower abdomen, as you lift that gently back up and back towards the, towards the wall or towards the spine. The center of the chest is lifted. There's spreading from the center of the chest out towards the shoulders. The arms are extended down by the sides of the body. The back of the neck is long. The throat is quiet. The jaw is quiet. The eyes are quiet. And the breath is steady.
And then you can uh, gently open your eyes and we'll stretch our arms forward, externally rotating our upper arms and then inhale and draw the arms overhead. So stretching the body with the body still supported or the imaginary support behind you on the wall, the arms stretch, the triceps are moving back towards the wall, the elbows stretch up towards the fingers, the armpits stretch up towards the fingers, the elbows are stretched straight, and then inhale and exhale, lower the arms. And then we'll interlace our fingers. So the right thumb and forefinger are on top. Press the palms forward, stretch the elbows. Inhale, stretch the arms overhead. And maintain the length in the body from the feet to the hands. So try to create the length, create the space on the, uh, the bottoms of the feet that you need. Keep spreading the bottoms of the feet. Feel the buttocks are lengthening, so you're not gripping in the buttocks. The abdomen is lifting up, but you're not hardening the abdomen. Press the palms towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, lower the arms, then the elbows. Change the interlace, interlace of the fingers. Press the palms forward. Stretch the elbows again. Inhale and take the arms one more time overhead. Using the arms to create space in the armpits, the armpit chest, the top chest, the middle chest, the abdomen. Take an inhale and exhale, lower the arms and the elbows. Release the arms down by the sides and just pause there for a moment. You can step away from the wall for a moment to reset yourself. And I'm just gonna make sure we're all muted. And so now we'll do a couple of lateral poses. So have your blocks. And um, again, you're gonna be at the wall. So your back body will be at the wall if you can. If you don't have a wall, again, you can put your heel at the wall at one end of a wall or a baseboard. But have your back body at the wall and inhale your fingers up towards your chest and step the arms and legs wide. And again, reset so that you can feel your back body on the wall. And then uh, we'll turn the left leg and foot out, the right foot in. And inhale and exhale, reach out over the right leg. Take your hand on your support and you can take it a little bit higher. You can use a chair for your hand if you want or a high block. So again, feeling the support of the back body on the wall or the heel at the wall, a little bit more um, space because you've got a higher block or a chair. And with the left leg turned out, feel the outer left hip moving towards the wall and a spreading across from the, the left hip across to the right hip. So there's space there. There's spreading also in, the, in that same area on the back of the body. So spreading on the front of the pelvis and the back of the pelvis. And then you can press your feet and inhale, come back up. And we'll turn our feet forward and then turn the right leg out back foot in. 
to let the pelvis is level to begin as you inhale and exhale, reach out over the right leg. Again, you can take your hand on a, a higher block. Feeling that the, the, the back body is on the wall. So the buttocks are still on the wall, the shoulders are still on the wall. And the right leg turns out from the top of the thigh and that outer right hip can be on the wall, sort of anchoring you there. And then feel that there's a spreading from that right hip across the pelvis to the left hip, as well as again in that same space on the back body. So from the right hip to the left hip spreading, actually from the center out to the sides, feel that there's space being created on either side of the, the sacrum. And then press your feet and stand up and take the feet together and stand for a moment in Tadasana. To feel the, the feet, the bottoms of the feet, the soles of the feet spreading, the abdomen, the, especially the lower abdomen, gently toning, lifting up, sides of the body lifting up. And then we'll do uh, Utita Parjva Konasana, side angle pose. So inhale the finger, fingertips up and step the legs, arms and legs wide. And then turn the left leg and foot out, the back foot in. Feel that the pelvis is spreading here wide. Then the pelvis stays level. As you inhale and exhale, bend the left knee so it comes over the ankle. And then again, inhale and exhale and extend over the left leg. You can take your right hand on your hip and take a little more height under your arm. So whether it's a higher block or a, a chair, just giving yourself a little more space. Feel the connection of the upper body on the wall and feel there's a, a spreading from the lower body to the upper body, <clears throat> particularly across the pelvis, and then extend the right arm overhead in Uttita Parjva Kanasana. The tailbone lengthens down, the pubic bone lifts up slightly, the abdomen lifts up slightly, and there's a length across the side body. The knee is bent, the thigh is moving down towards the floor, the back of the head is supported on the wall, and then press the feet and inhale, come back up, turn the feet, and then turn the right leg and foot out, and keep the pelvis upright so that the two sides start off even as the top of the right thigh turns out. And with the support of the wall, inhale and exhale, bend the right knee, And then again, inhale and exhale and take the right hand down, the left hand to your waist, being up a little bit higher, really noticing that the two sides are even because you're not contracting the lower side of the body to get down to the floor. And then there's a spreading from the lower side of the body towards the upper side, towards the wall or towards the space behind you and then extend the left arm by the ear. And continuing to notice where the head tends towards. So if you're not being reminded to take the back of the head to the wall, does, is your tendency to 
slowly inch things forward. See if you can't remind yourself to keep the back of the head in line with the shoulder blades of the back body at the wall. And then press the feet and inhale, come back up. Turn the feet and step back or hop <laughs> to Tadasana. Just pause there again for a moment, either at the wall or slightly away from the wall. And now you have uh, an imprint of the wall behind you. So even though you're not at the wall, can you maintain that lift and expansiveness in Tadasana? All right, one more standing pose at the wall with the, the support of the wall. Um, we'll do Ardha Chandrasana. So again, um, even if you're not at, at, at the wall, take a little more height, or especially if you're not at the wall, take a little more height. So maybe, or, or whatever you need to be most stable. So um, the block, you can even use a chair, so if you're not at the wall, but to give you a little more support in the pose, you can use a, your forearm on a chair. You can have, of course, the back foot on the wall too. So have some extra added support. Again, if you have the, the wall behind you, use that. If you don't, use a little extra. So we'll start in Tadasana, head back, chest lifted, inhale the fingertips up, step the arms and legs wide, turn the left leg and foot out, orient yourself so that you're upright, outer right shoulder towards the wall, inhale, exhale, reach out over first into Uchita Trikonasana, and again, orient yourself so you uh, know that you have that support behind you. And then bend, you can take the left right hand onto your hip, bend the left leg, step forward, and use the height that you need, whether it's a block or your chair. And then you've got the wall supporting you behind. And again, your left leg, top of the thigh turns out. The left hip is at the wall and lift the abdomen up so that you're supporting your back body and you're lifting and supporting your abdominal organs and then lift the um, spread across the, the lower abdomen and pelvis, lifting that right hip up and back towards the wall behind you spreading across the pelvis, and then you can lift the right arm up and be in Uttita Trikan, uh, Ardha Chandrasana. And feel the expansiveness with uh, that, all that support behind you, underneath you, to be able to extend and expand in the pose. And then you can take your right arm down, look down towards your foot, bend the knee, step back, into a brief trikonasana and then stand up and turn the feet and come to the other side. So spread the arms, turn the right leg and foot out, back foot in. Inhale, exhale, reach out over the leg. Orient yourself in Trikonasana first, knowing that you have that support behind you, you're steady. And then you can take your left hand on your hip, bend the right knee, step forward, come into Ardha Chandrasana with the support behind you. The right thigh and leg turns out, that outer 
right hip is on the wall. The abdomen lifts and spreads from the lower side of the body to the, the upper side of the body. The chest spreads as well from the lower side to the upper side. And then you can raise your arm up and fully expand into Ardha Chandrasana. Back of the neck long, throat soft, eyes soft. And then inhale, exhale, lower the uh, left arm, bend the right knee, step back into a brief Trikonasana. And then press your feet. Inhale, come up, turn the feet, and take the arms and legs back to Tadasana. All right, let's take a um, Uttanasana. So the uh, chair, if your chair is cold and hard. You might want something on the chair, but we'll support our head so the feet can be hip distance and then you can bend your elbows and rest your head on your support. To see that the legs are uh, upright, so the hips are over the heels, the kneecaps lift, the thighs lift, the abdomen continues to lift and spread from the center out. There's length from the center of the sacrum out to the outer hips. There's space in the diaphragm. The head is quiet. The face and jaw and throat are quiet. And then you can um, extend your arms and place your hands on your chair and then exhale your hands to your waist and stand up. And we'll do uh, Dvipada Viparita Dandasana. So that's a back bend over a chair. So if you have a sticky mat or a, mm, a sticky mat uh, would be best so it doesn't slip and slide on your chair. And then blocks for your feet and a bolster or some um, high-ish height for your head. So several blankets or a bolster and some blankets or a pillow or a couple of pillows. so that the crown of the head can have some support. And then you'll sit backwards in your chair. You need to estimate your distance from the wall. 
so that when you when you lie back and stretch your legs, the feet will be on blocks at the wall. Let's see. You'll be able to see me there. So estimate your distance and then with the chest well lifted, you'll lengthen your uh, lower back as you come down over your chair. And this would be a good time to estimate again your leg distance so that when you stretch your legs, you'll be in the right spot. And also your head distance to your support. So the lower shoulder blades will be on the chair seat. So you want to have whatever height you need underneath your head from there. And then you can take your hands underneath the chair seat and grab the back end of the chair, the back legs of the chair. And then when you're ready, you can stretch your legs so that the heels are on your blocks and your feet are at the wall, if possible. So the feet are supported, the legs are extended, the torso is extended, the chest is broad and well lifted. And you can use your hands on your chair legs to further open the chest. You see that the breath is moving evenly. There's no straining in the breath. Moving the breath into any places where there might be strain in the body. using the breath to create extension in the body and softness in the body. There's plenty of room across the front of the body and in the openness of the chest to move the breath. Expand the breath into the sides of the body. See that even though you have your, your head back and the front of the throat is extended that you're not gripping at all in the back of the neck, that there's still a sense of length in the back of the neck. Release the tops of the shoulders down, shoulder blades move down. Releasing tension across the neck and shoulders.
And take a few more deep breaths. And you can move slowly. So move in your own time. When you're ready, you can bend your knees and place your feet on the floor and remove your hands from your, the underneath the chair and then carefully press yourself up, lift the chest to come up and just sit for a moment there upright once you get upright. And then again, moving slowly, extricate yourself from the chair, come out of the chair. And once again, if you can have your back to the wall, you can have your back to the wall, have two blocks. And we'll sit with our back to the wall in Baddha Konasana. And again, if, if having your back to something doesn't work, don't, don't worry about it. Um, if, you, if you have a couch or something that can support your back body, that's great. If not, don't worry about it. And then have um, two blocks to the sides. And we'll start in Dandasana just for a moment again, the foundational seated pose with the back body to the wall, feeling the support of the wall in the pose. Feel how it's possible to be supported, but still expanding, still uplifted and broad, allows you to not grip and harden in the pelvis and abdomen, but to gently lift that up and, and use it as support to continue to expand the torso. And then you can grab behind your knees and take your knees out to the sides. And the blocks are for you to extend your knees onto. So you might put them on their sides if that's the right height. You might get if you might get your block down to the low height, you might get it to the medium height. You can use the um, blocks on its side, but have the pelvis back towards the wall if you can. Hands by the sides, back body on the wall. Use whatever height you need to sit on underneath you and then extend, use the blocks as feedback to extend your knees down towards. So maybe take them a little bit lower than you can um, easily reach so that you're extending down towards them, but they should be touching your knees or your outer knees or shins. And then just sit for a moment with that lift and extension, spreading across the pelvis, lifting, uh, toning in the abdomen, lifting of the side body, back of the head supported, back of the neck long, throat soft, face quiet, eyes quiet, And then release and draw the knees up and extend the legs out and maintain your back body at the wall. You don't need the blocks for the next pose, but we'll sit in Dandasana just for another moment, re resetting. Take a 
again, noticing how they're, you know, uh, how you can release the front groins and the abdomen by having the support on the wall of the wall in this pose. Oftentimes we're gripping to hold ourselves up in the pose, but this allows you to be upright and relaxed in that area. And then you can, again, reach behind your knees and separate your legs into Upavista Konasana. And you may not need the support that you had. So you can remove the support. You might need more support. So you might need a little more height. But keep the pelvis upright. Keep the, pel the back of the pelvis at the wall if you can. Back body at the wall. And the legs are in Dandasana, they're just separated. So the front thighs roll in and down, top thighs press down, backs of the knees are extended, centers of the heels are on the floor, abdomen lifted. And again, with the support of the wall, there's a little less gripping in the legs and pelvis and abdomen to sit upright. So the back supported, but still uh, extended, chest lifted, head supported. And then you can draw your legs back to Dandasana. And we'll do a couple of seated forward bends. So I'm a little stiffer. So I'm gonna use a chair to extend onto. And maybe, well, actually, I don't need much support under my pelvis, but I'll use the chair to extend forward to. You can also extend forward to a bolster. But we'll do Janushirshasana. So grab the support that you need, that you may need under your hips to sit on. And then a chair or a bolster to extend forward to. And again, you might want a blanket on your chair if it's cold and hard. And so we'll sit in Dandasana. And then you can bend your uh, left knee out to the side. And you'll turn your torso towards your uh, right leg and sit up. And then you can reach your arms forward towards the chair um, back or the chair seat or beyond the foot and either place your head on a bolster or you can place your head on the seat of the chair. And see that you're on enough height your knee is, is high up, take a little bit of height so that leg can extend down. And if the knee is still high, you can put a little support on the outside of the knee.
So the head is supported. The pelvis is supported. And there's length in the torso for there to be space for the abdomen and space for the diaphragm. So that the breath moves easily in the pose. There's space in the back body as you extend forward for the breath to move into the back body. And when you're ready, you can inhale and sit up and lift your knee and extend it forward. And sit for a moment in Dandasana in the center. And then you can take your hand behind the right knee and take the right knee up to the side. And again, take the support that you need so that you're comfortable and steady. And take a moment in the upright position, turning the torso towards your straight leg, or, uh, lifting, rotating, expanding uh, from the center out. And then inhale and exhale, come forward, reach your arms forward towards your support. And then you can bend your elbows and rest your forehead on your, and elbows on your forearms. So that there's ease and comfort in your legs and groin so that they extend and release. And from there, you can extend the torso, lifting and toning the abdomen, spreading the diaphragm and the rib cage, allowing the breath to move easily in the body. And again, when you're ready, you can carefully lift yourself up and then draw the right knee up and extend the right leg out. And you can take your legs a little bit wider if you'd like, and we'll extend the arms up and forward into Hashimotanasana, so the legs straight. So get the length in the torso, and then you can bend your elbows and rest again your head 
on your forearms or on a bolster. You may need more height under your, your hips in this pose. But if that's the case, you can add a little support under the, the sit bones. And then again, when you're ready, you can slowly lift yourself up. And we'll practice uh, Supta Baddha Konasana. So a bolster or a couple of blankets for behind your back, a little, little extra support under the head a strap if you have it for around your legs. And uh, I like to use a couple of rolled blankets under my outer thighs. If you're running out of blankets, you can use the, uh, the edge of the block on your outer thighs so that you have some support. Use pillows. And then you'll sit in front of your long support and place a strap over your torso and then around your feet and tighten the strap so that it holds your feet in. Support under the outer thighs, and then lengthening the tailbone, lower back as you keep the chest lifted and lie back. Arms spread from the center out to the sides, palms up. Nice length across the entire torso back body supported and the chest lifted and broad. The head and neck are supported. Shoulders move down the back and spread from the center out to the sides. Gently 
As you inhale and exhale, there's a toning of the abdomen. The spreading of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles of the rib cage. Lots of space for the breath. Lots of space for the abdominal organs. Once again, the lower leg, the lower body, the legs and the groins are, are steady and stable and uh, relaxed. So there's no hardness or gripping in the groin. You're supported with the strap and with the blankets on the outer thighs. So that you feel like you're extending, but you're held in this position by the support, by the props. And you can allow your body to fully release into the props. To relax, to rest, to restore.
So begin to take a few deeper breaths. And again, you're gonna move in your own time. We're not in a rush. But when you're ready, you'll disturb yourself as little as possible and remove the strap from your feet and then extend the legs out. And just pause there for a moment. And then again, as you're ready, you can carefully bend your knees and roll over onto your right side and slowly make your way up. And we have time for one more pose before Shavasana, believe it or not. So um, I wanted to, so, uh, so we'll kind of get set up so we can move as minimally as possible from one to the other. Um, so we'll do Supta Padangustasana one and two. And um, so I've got my blanket out so that I can move from here into Shavasana. Got a little support for my head, which I may or may not need for Supta Parangustasana, but I would like to have it for Shavasana, so I'll keep that up near my head. Um, you can set up with your feet, again, towards the wall or at the wall um, for a little extra support. If that's inconvenient for all of your other setups, don't worry about it, but that's a, an option is to have the feet at the wall, it gives you a little more support. It's good for the sacrum and lower back. And I've got my strap for uh, Suptapana Gustasana and also a, um, you'll need a support for your outer hip in Suptapana Gustasana too. So that can be a bolster or a pillow or um, a rolled blanket like you just had. Um, another way to do it if it happens to work with your setup um, is to have the foot at the wall up to the side. So um, some support so that your leg, so it's a less active Supta Padangustasana too. So either outer hip support or you could have your foot out to the side on the wall. And then make a, um, I'm gonna show you something too with the strap. It may not work for everybody. It, it depends on the length of your leg and your flexibility and the length of your strap, but I'll just show it to you so that those of you who do have it, um, have a long enough strap, you can do this. But we'll um, uh, just start on your backs. You guys know the poses, but have your, have your whatever you need nearby so you can move easily from one pose to the other. I'm gonna keep my left foot at the wall and put the strap over my right foot. And then you'll either just hold the, the two ends of the strap like we normally do with the strap in either hand and the elbows out to the side, keeping the chest open. And if you wanted to, you could make it restorative by putting the strap behind the back of your head. So it's like right at the occiput as much as you can, supporting the back of the head. Mine's slipping a little bit. So it's maybe not the perfect length, but you can support the back of the head and have your foot up. Again, it depends on your length of your strap, the flexibility of the leg, but if it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, you just 
hold the strap and have the leg up. And just take a few deep breaths in whichever position you're in, keeping the sides of the waist long, the top chest open, throat soft. And then you can move your support for your outer hip nearby, near to your outer right hip. And then take the right leg out to the side. And so you're still holding the foot with the strap, but your outer hip is supported. So you're not having to hold the leg up so much. And there's again, that sense of extension and ease in the groin and inner thigh, pelvis, so that you're able to spread the pelvis, spread the abdomen, spread the thighs, and keep the breath soft and the mind quiet. And then you can lift the right leg up and lower the right leg down and just rest for a moment between sides. Noticing if there's any difference between the two sides. And what is that difference? And then you can put your support over to the left side and bend the uh, left leg and place the strap over the sole of the left foot. And again, either holding the two ends of the strap with the elbows wide, giving yourself lots of space in the upper chest, or maybe you can tuck the strap behind the back of the head. You wanna watch out for the the buckle, you don't want that on your head. It's not comfortable. But if it works, it's a nice traction for your neck and for your leg. But otherwise, just holding the two ends of the strap, supporting the left leg. And then we'll take the strap into the left hand, the support on the outer left hip and take the left leg out to the side so that it's somewhat supported by the bolster blankets, maybe the foot on the wall. Allowing the pelvis to spread, the abdomen, the chest, the thighs or the thigh. feeling supported in the pose. And after a big inhalation and exhalation, you can draw the left leg back up and then release your strap and lower the leg down and make any final adjustments you need to make to come into Shavasana. So the back body is spread, the back of the neck is long, the back of the head is supported. You're once again like you were at the beginning of the class in Tadasana with your back against the wall only you're on your back. The legs spread apart slightly and the leg, the feet can fall away from one another. The arms externally rotate, creating space on the armpit chest as you turn the palms up.
the throat is quiet, the jaw is quiet, tongue. Energy spreading from the center of the eyes out to the temples. The entire body is supported and rested. So you can enjoy a few moments of silence. So begin to take a few deeper breaths. Gently wake your body up. And 
And when you're ready, you can carefully open your eyes and rest your hands on your abdomen. And then bend your knees one at a time, placing the soles of the feet on the floor. Before you carefully roll over onto your right side. And then slowly press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Just taking a few moments to notice any changes in your physical body and your state of mind after the restorative poses. And we'll take our hands in namaskar in front of our hearts, bowing our head towards our hands. Namaste. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you have a restful evening and weekend and you know enjoy one more warm cozy night <laughs> while it's cold i'm sure it'll be warm enough soon <laughs> take care